Awesome, fantastic. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Latoya Benjamin. I serve as the Director of Economic Development for New York State Senator James Sanders Jr. And we welcome you to the State of the Union uh, District where we have some phenomenal leaders in the labor movement that's gonna be sharing some uh, updates in terms of what's happening in our community uh, with our unions and uh, our, our employees that are on the front lines. Um, before we get started and I introduce our phenomenal speakers today, uh, we wanted to take a, a moment to, to um, a moment of silence just to acknowledge and honor uh, the fallen brothers and sisters in the labor movement during the COVID crisis. So we could just take 10 minutes, 10 seconds of silence, please. Awesome. Um, and as we wait for our, our senator to jump on the line, I have uh, the pleasure to introduce our featured speakers this morning. Uh, we have the phenomenal uh, Ms. Rosemary Sinclair, who is the first vice president of the Council of School Supervisors and Administrators. Uh, very excited to have you, Ms. Sinclair. Welcome. Uh, we also have uh, the fabulous Ms. Gloria Middleton. She's the president of communication workers for our American local 1180. Ms. Middleton, welcome to the call. Uh, then we also have uh, the phenomenal Mr. John Koslip, the president of the Queens Library Guild of Local 1321. Uh, welcome. And then we also have Mr. Anthony Wells, president of social services employees of Union Local 371. Uh, welcome you all. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, uh, as we get started, uh, we have our first speaker. She's going to be with us for a short period of time. So we want to uh, throw the mic to her and allow her to open up and tell us what's happening uh, in the community uh, in her, her spe uh, specific area. Uh, Ms. Sinclair. Thank you, Latoya. And I want to thank Senator Sanders for allowing me to come to speak on behalf of our members. I send greetings from our CSA President Mark Canizaro and our exec Executive Vice President Henry Rubio. Like all citizens of our city, our members were affected personally. Most tragically, we lost two members and have many members who lost families and friends. Professionally, this pandemic has obviously impacted our members like nothing else in the history of our city. People say that crisis defines and reveal leadership. What New York City school leaders and their staff have done to, for their communities in the last six months is nothing short of heroic. And our city will be forever grateful. We've often known as the principal's union, but I want to note that we represent not only principals, but assistant principals, early childhood directors and assistant directors, and over a thousand other administrators and supervisors that work in the borough centers and DOE cent Central. And they all deserve our thanks and praise for what they have done and continue to do for us all in the coming weeks and months. When I think back to when the pandemic first began in March, school leaders and early childhood directors kept their community calm and kept providing a high level of education while they remained in buildings. In the instances where there was a positive case, they did whatever was required to protect their communities and advocate fiercely to shut down their buildings. 
Now, when the mayor finally agreed with our union's call to close all school buildings and offices, our members led their communities and team in the transition to remote learning. They provided professional development to their staff and supervised remote learning to make sure it was of the highest quality possible given the crisis. They tracked down students who weren't heard from and tried their hardest to keep them engaged from home. They made sure every student who needed a device received one. In many cases, they helped assure that every student who needed a meal got one. They helped determine what students needed to continue learning over the summer so as none to fall short, far behind their peers. They kept their communities together, connected as best they could with online events, including celebration of those graduating. They ran summer schools in spite of so many te technological and logistic obstacles placed in their way. And most did all this while taking care of their own families or who are those they may have been suffering loss also. While planning for the school year, our members have worked tirelessly through their well-earned vacation all summer to plan for the unmanageable upcoming school year. They contended with a continual lack of answers, communication, and guidance. They have crafted detailed, carefully considered plans only to find out that the city's guidelines was not allowed for these plans. And so they went back to the drawing board to plan again. They have tried to kept, uh, keep their staff and families informed and calm about the upcoming school year as they were able. They used their creative and knowledge, creativity and knowledge to take full advantage of their school space and potential outdoor learning opportunities. They fought for a nurse in every school and centers to make sure the cities provide enough safety supplies and resources. They have been working around the clock to make sure that they do everything in their power that their buildings can open safely with social distancing guidelines and the course PPE and to make sure that they are fully prepared if someone has the symptom of COVID-19 or a positive case. They organized and advocated for those they served, telling the mayor and chancellor that their building would simply not be ready to open on September 10th. And because they raised their voices, they finally got the mayor to, mayor to delay the opening so they would have enough time with their staff to prepare for the return of students and in many cases to find the staff they need. Finally, in conclusion, our members have been as deeply impacted by the pandemic as their communities, but because they are leaders, they will continue to work every waking hour until September 21st to make sure that they can look families in the eye and say, it is safe for you to spend, to send your child and your children here, that the education experience will be at a highest quality possible under their challenging, and I mean challenging circumstances. Thank you. Awesome, Ms. Sinclair. Thank you so much for sharing uh, a phenomenal update. And, and we honor uh, all of our workers in the, the educational institutions and, and the work that they have ahead of them. Um, I know we're not going to have you long, uh, so we definitely appreciate your time. Um, I want to uh, just move forward and uh, welcome and acknowledge uh, Ms. Gloria Middleton, President of Communication Workers of America Local 1180. Ms. Middleton, take it away. You just unmute yourself. Good morning again, and thank you for this opportunity to be able to speak about what my members have been through. And thanks Senator Sanders for allowing us to have this platform to talk about what city employees have gone through through this pandemic. I first wanna say my members are administrative employees in every agency in New York City, which includes health and hospitals, police department, fire department, um, food stamp sites, Medicaid sites, 
wherever there's a city agency, our members are there. So when this pandemic started, the mayor talked about essential workers. So our members were included as essential workers. This started out in March um, where we had to, excuse me, this started out in March where we were in the middle of this pandemic and nobody knew what to do. Didn't know what was going on. Didn't know how serious this was. Um, and so we were working with agencies to see what we could do as employee, as, as workers to make sure that we were covering the city services that was needed for people who were uh, definitely in need of services. So then the pandemic just, as they said, the peak began to climb. And then the mayor changed and switched positions to say, yes, we need essential workers, but they were to be able to telework as much as possible because they needed to lock down the city. Some essential workers, such as people in food stamps, those people that work in H&H, &H, had to still go to work every day. And yet they're still hearing the numbers and they're hearing about how they had to still come to work and then the, that it was not safe to be in the street, et cetera, but our members persevered and went to work. H and H, especially, that was the epicenter of the where people who had COVID were going to. Elmhurst Hospital, especially, we had members there. Um, one of our shop stewards, our long-standing shop stewards, um, whose job was to give out the PPE to the doctors and nurses, but was not allowed to wear PPEs themselves. One of those shop stewards passed away March 27th. Um, this, and, and in the pandemic, we lost nine um, members in different agencies. I cannot tell you the panic that was going on amongst our workers um, and naturally being. Uh, this was something nobody had ever experienced and members were calling us and just didn't know which way to turn. So we had never been through this either. So it was our mission to work with agencies to say, listen, I know what our members do. It's mostly done by computer. How can we work it so that you give equipment to them so that they can work at home? Um, it was working 24 hours uh, damn near around the clock to try to get as many people as possible to telework. Um, of course, those who work in H&H &H, and certain other sites were not able to telework, so they had to go to work. It was about making sure that um, the areas were clean. In the beginning of this pandemic, and I have to say, especially in HRA, where it was demanded that they come to work and we had issues with the, the cleaning, um, it was frightening for a lot of our members. I remember, I know I called members personally who had sent me emails who I thought I didn't want them to have a nervous breakdown and was just trying to talk them down and saying, listen, we're going to do the best we can to, to make sure that you're safe. So it took a lot of phone calls. It took a lot of going to the city council to make certain agencies do what they needed to do to make sure our members were safe. Um, it took a process and it took some weeks, but we finally had, um, I would say, maybe 60% of our members being able to telework. Um, the other 40% still had to go to work, especially in those needed services um, in the sites and in H&H. &H. Um, it was also about trying to get PPEs for those who do still had to go to work. You know, it was a constant fight with agencies. Some agencies were more cooperative than others. And I know some of my fellow uh, unionists can attest to that. Um, we did everything we could to make sure that as many people that was possible were able to work from home and had the equipment, which is another set of circumstances that we had to go through. Um, as time passed on and as the peak went down, we still having people telework. There's 
at this point, they are now asking people to come back in one or two days a week. We're asking for walkthroughs to make sure that people are safe as they um, go back to work those one or two days. There's CDC guidelines and DCAS guidelines that if you still have to have reasonable accommodations, accommodations because there are some people that are high risk still in this pandemic. So we want to make sure that they're safe. Um, it's it's a constant move to make sure that our members uh, who have to go to work are in a safe environment. And again, some agencies are more cooperative than others. So, and we constantly are telling our members, if you see something, say something, because you know we lost so many people during this pandemic. And then, as we progress in our and and we try to go back to work in some sort of way, then we hear about these layoffs. Um, and some of my fellow unionists will be also be talking about that. And I believe it's unconscionable that the mayor even made that statement without talking to the unions to say, how can we fix this? It's, it is quite evident that the city is in trouble financially. We lost tax income, we lost un unemployment is to the roof in the city. You know, there's no um, tourist income. We, we understand there's a problem, but there's a way to fix it other than laying off the people who were so essential to making sure that this city was running through this pandemic. Um, the MLC did get together and I understand we are talking to the mayor now. It should have been done before. Um, and so, we, uh, our members are panicking. They not sure what this second wave is going to do, whether it's coming or not. So it's, it's some trying times, but through it all, we're getting through it. And um, if any of any union members are listening to this, just know that everything that you do is appreciated and you are heroes. You are all heroes. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Middleton, for that, that update. Um, look forward to further discussion with you on that. Um, next up, uh, for our union leaders, we have uh, no other than Mr. Anthony Wells, uh, President of Social Service Employees Union Local 371. Uh, Mr. Wells, take it away. Thank Good morning. You. Good morning. Yes, we are a Social Service Employees Union, Employees Union Local 371, represented by 22,000 members in every city agency HAC, NYCHA, every community board, borough president's offices, DA offices. So we are, we are a crucial part of, of helping the city run. Uh, we've been affected like everybody else has been affected. We've lost members, over 41 SSEU local 371 members have succumbed to this, the virus. I myself uh, was hospitalized and, and still recovering. Uh, and this scourge is it, just unbelievable, unprecedented and scary as hell, okay, that's the first thing. Then we're dealing with the scourge of racial injustice in this country, which is rearing its, its head. Uh, it was never gone. It was buried for a while, brought up by the person that presently sits in, in, in 1600. Uh, exasperated, frustrating, uh, scary. And then we have the scourge of being threatened with layoffs. And city workers, in various, various titles, have worked to continue to keep the city running, okay? The most obvious are the first responders, but you know, there's just so many city workers in, in every aspect who worked in offices, in institutions, from home, wherever you work from during this crisis, you help carry this city forward. You know, working from home, it, it has its challenges too, okay? And one thing that no one was relieved of is the stress of changing lives, the way lives have been changed over the last six months. So we recognize all those city workers who have kept this city going, um, particularly in, in our union. We have workers that work in hospitals. We have workers that work in night shift. We have workers that, that go to the field, such as CPS workers and, and workers in HASA and APS, Still Protective Services. We have workers that process welfare uh, applications. By the way, the need for assistance has grown as people have been laid off from their jobs. So you know what? Everything that's kept the city going has been crucial. Okay, from first responders to people that clean, they clean the beds in the hospitals, 
people that, that process uh, applications for services, uh, for people who provide social services, social workers. So there's just, you can go through the whole list in the Board of Ed, the teachers and the parents, everyone who kept this city going is an essential worker, is critical to the life of the city. And it's unconscionable, as my sister Gloria said, that now they're being faced in the threat of being laid, being laid off. It's just, it's just unconscionable, unacceptable, quite frankly, unacceptable. And yesterday, the unions got together and had their voice sing loudly, loudly. And we're not going to sit back. Now, people always say, what's the union doing about it? Well, we're doing what unions do. We fight back, we organize, we, we put pressure, we negotiate. This is not about individual unions. This is not about working people and keeping and their families. Okay, this is what this is about. This is a bigger issue. So we can't be in our boxes. We can't be parochial on this issue. One layoff is one layoff too many. One layoff is affecting a brother or a sister, whether they're in your union or not. And, and that's why I call on my, my fellow brothers and sisters in the movement and leadership, but also call on our members. You have to be a part of this. You have to one, keep, keep track of what's going on. And we put the call out to show our, 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 our unionism, you gotta respond. And you know, we can do it so many different ways. Yesterday, everybody can't come to a demonstration. I got that. You know, people have challenges they gotta deal with, whether it's, it's, it's taking care of their children during the day, or whether it's being exposed and having conditions or living with your family who have conditions, we got that. But you know what? Social media has played such a role, often too negative a role, but here's the chance for it to play a positive role. So we, we want you to be supportive. So that's what we are, SSE Local 371. We have a history of, of working with our community, being activists, and we also have a history of working with our brothers and sisters to get things done. This is not about uh, 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 what you, any individual can do. It's about what we all can do and what we must do. So that meeting today, I'm a member of the MLC. I'm not a member of the executive committee. They're meeting with the mayor today to hope we come up with a solution. And I want to talk about that a little later on as we deal with the state of the, of the union. Thank you very much. Powerful. And awesome. I have a technical difficulty. So I'm trying to get on my iPad. So that's why I'm in my hand moving around. Apologize. Perfectly fine, Mr. Wells. Thank you so much. And we appreciate your leadership. Thank you for sharing. Um, next up, we have uh, no other than, um, next up, we have no other than uh, President Sean D. Francois I, who serves as the president of New York City Board of Education Employees of Local 372. Mr. Francois, take it away. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Awesome. All these familiar faces on here. I love you all, guys. I know we work together in some capacity, and we're going to continue to work with some capacity as we move along. As you know that this COVID has changed a lot of people's lives, I mean, globally. It, it's a totally a, a, a different norm than we're used to. And we got to accept that norm. We got to adjust to that norm. And we got to face the fact that, the, that it is here. The reality of it is here. We can't do nothing about that. So we got to move on. We got to move ahead and make sure we do right. My members... In 372, as you know, we work for DOE. We're the support services of that school. That means we're the foundation. Now, yes, teachers are important. Principals are important. But we all are important because without us, that school don't move. You need us and everybody to make it move. From the course and guards, from the school food service workers, to the school aides, to the service workers, to the family workers, all the community titles, parent coordinators as such. We make a difference in that school. We need to be respected as such at the work that we do. We've been working through this COVID system ever since. School food service, my members have been out there since March, through holidays, through the summer, in the heat of the kitchen. I mean, they've been out there doing the work as essential workers. And, and, and they want to be praised as essential workers, but then yet, you, that's the words of it. But where's the action of it that you really care as essential workers? With the compensation for them doing the work that they're doing? The question guards out there. I mean, it's just crazy in the pandemic that we have right here. Where's the safety protocol at? People are scared. The anxiety is high. They don't know what to do because there's no answers to their questions. And it's hard for unions like us because we're trying to give them answers because they come to us for that. That's what we're here for. But if they're not forthcoming, 
The DOE doesn't give us answers. We can't give them answers as well. It's very difficult to do that. And we looked upon as not knowing what's going on, or what are you there for? Why we have unions? Is that see the, the problem is communication. You have to come. You have to communicate all across the board. Otherwise, nobody knows what's going on. Now, understand me. I'm in a very catch twenty two situation because I don't like trial and error. I don't like nobody be thrown in the schools as guinea pigs. But at the same time, in order for us to assess the work that needs to be done, we have to go in it to see what's wrong. You have to do the work to see how to how to correct the work. You can't from the outside say, oh, this ain't gonna happen, it's gonna happen. You gotta do it in order to see what's wrong, to see where the complaints are at, to see when you go in and see, you know what? They're not doing what they said in discussion. We discussed this, we discussed this. They say safety match was here, it's not here. These are the things that you have to be the ears and eyes for to us so we know what's going on, so we can nip it in the butt from early on. But you're gonna have to test the waters first to see what's going on. And that's sorry to say that because it's like a trolley everything and you're not guinea pigs. All right, I understand that. So, but we can understand that the safety is the most important thing for and foremost. That is why the delayment of schools was so important and so important because of the fact is that we know you guys need some type of training first. You just can't walk in there blindly like that that know what's going on. You wanna know what your surroundings about, the directions, what's going on here. You just can't walk in there like, okay, this is, this is what you do. No, you have to have the assessment of your mind to see what's going on. So we know we're going into without walking in blind. So the, the, the delays were so important. I know it could have been a long delay, but I'm just glad you wrote a delay so they can get the opportunity to do some, do some training and some assessments that are going, going on. But I'm not just guys. These are city workers. Your members are very hardworking people. They've been, work, they've been hardworking people before this COVID. They need to be respected and knowledge for the work they do and get paid for the work they do. And let, let, let people know that school food and the course and guards and everybody else from our support services in the schools are very important. And they're here to do the job and we're here to stay to do the job, but we got to make sure there's no layoffs so we can keep it doing the job. It's disgusting to say, oh yeah, there's such a workers out here doing the thing, y'all out here making it happen, thank you so much. That's in, that's in one mouth and then the other mouth that says, oh no, I'm sorry, I gotta lay you off. That is the most disrespectful thing I, I can ever hear. I don't understand how you can do that in, at, at the same mouth. It's disgusting. It makes no sense. So on that note, I'll be here also to ask some more questions um, and to go abroad for the State of the Union address. I'm glad we're here, guys, because we got we to be here to make a difference because there's a lot going on. I know there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of moving parts. Every day, there's a different story, different answer, different question, but we have to keep it going, guys. That's what we're here for to do. Union strong, guys, and we have to make, make sure it happens. All right? Thank you, Latoya. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Francois. I look forward to hearing more from you during this discussion. And thank you for sharing. Um, next up, we have Mr. DeMont Smith, Executive Director of United Federations of Teachers. Uh, Mr. Smith, take it away. Hi, uh, thank you, uh, Latoya. Thank you for that promotion. But <laughs> my title is I'm the political coordinator for uh, the UFT for Queens. But thank you. Um, thank you to all my uh, brothers and sisters from uh, my fellow unions here, and Jane, uh, Senator Saunders for hosting this town hall. You've hosted many of these throughout this crisis over the summer, and uh, it's, it's greatly appreciated for everyone tuning in. Unfortunately, I can't stay for the whole, th the, the, the whole uh, thing. I have other meetings that I have to get to as we get ready to open our schools and have our staff back there on Tuesday. But uh, I want to echo what uh, so many others have said, sorry. Um, so we were able to come to an agreement, as everybody knows, we were able to come to an agreement. We wouldn't have been able to do that without everybody standing together. And for all the educators who are listening in and the parents and the, the entire school community, because uh, Sean is correct, uh, uh, there's a lot of people that work in those buildings and uh, everybody worked together to make sure that we pushed back the opening for students so that we could get into the buildings. The buildings will be safe. If they're not safe, we'll have them inspected and uh, we'll be reaching out to the city to close those buildings should that be the case. The plan that we've came up with is a plan that I believe will, will hopefully be mirrored throughout the country. It is a plan that was guided by medical experts, outside medical experts. We weren't gonna just listen to the DOE. That trust was broken some time ago, back in March, when there was a delay to the opening. So I think where we're at now, hopefully is a good, is a good place 
to begin getting our students back into the buildings because this was never about us not wanting to go back to work. The reality is nobody ever stopped working. Uh, the educators worked heroically since March doing a, the incredible job they always did, they always do, but under very, very unusual circumstances in the last uh, uh, several months. And they're ready and able to get back up and continue doing that work again. And we're looking forward to what will be without question, right? A very, very unusual school year. Um, to touch on the, the, I know this conversation is about everything to the State of Unions, just on that big issue that's now sitting on top of it, which it has, President Francois said is kind of ironic. After all the praise and all the heroic work that all these uh, uh, men, uh, women and men in labor did for the last several months, for it to even be on the table as a, a discussion or conversation, lay off the heroes of New York City is, is mind boggling. And I hope as we all stand together and everybody on this panel and everybody out there works together to make sure that that doesn't become anything other than a brief conversation because this city deserves better uh, than to uh, even be touching that. We understand there's a budget crisis. There are many, many ways in which a budget crisis can be handled. For the first conversation to be, let's lay off the heroes of New York City. Whew. Not, not, not a good place to start, right? Not a good place to start. But I'll stick around for as long as I can, but please forgive me and, and, and uh, thank you, Senator Saunders, again for everything and your amazing staff for putting this together. I'll stick around as long as I can, but I'm unfortunately won't be able to do the whole two hours. Thank you, everybody. Awesome, thank you, Mr. Smith. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and you guys have a lot of acknowledgements from your members in the comment boxes. So they're, they're saying thank you and, and well said. So we're getting a lot of great feedback from um, your respective members. Um, okay, awesome. Up next, uh, we have Mr. John Hislop, who is the president of the Queens Chamber, uh, I'm sorry, the Queens Library Guild Local 1321. Uh, John, please take it away. Um, thank you, Latoya. This is, um, and thank you, Senator Sanders and the rest of the Senator staff for inviting me to this uh, uh, forum. Um, as you know, I'm the president of Local 1321 Queens Library Guild. And uh, we represent 950 Queens Library employees. Um, and um, it's the majority of the Queens Library uh, workers. I'm also the secretary of DC 37, which represents 150,000 city workers and workers at nonprofit child care centers. Um, and we're a union along with Sean uh, Francois, uh, Sean Francois the first and Anthony Wells, who you heard earlier. <clears throat> At the library, the local represents and advocates for the library's librarians, clerks, custodians, drivers, maintainers, um, but also those that that front like cohort. But also, we also represent the um, back office staff, the IT workers, HR, finance, um, the people in programs and services, um, and so we act as as whatever what all unions do. We ensure that our Queens Library employees get the benefits and salaries that they've earned. Um, but in turn, this also allows them to provide all the vital and amazing services that, that, that Queens residents have grown to expect. Um, so therefore we play a direct role ensuring its members have stability with decent jobs and benefits. But then we play an indirect role whereby our members provide the, communi provide the communities we serve with economic and social stability. You know, the books, magazines, databases, computers, printers, Wi-Fi, expert reference, um, programs and clean and safe physical buildings that we local 13 to 21 members provide are very real grounded and tangible resources for everyone um, no matter the color of their skin religion gender sexual orientation um, and throughout queens we help people enjoy the reading learn a subject get a job be entertained and feel safe learn english and so much more in Senator Sanders district, uh, we, Queens Library started providing services at the um, South Ozone Park branch, the Peninsula branch um, for, and that's the pick up and drop off of books um, and other materials. Arvern, um, the Arvern branch is opened as a fulfillment center um, where we're providing um, those um, 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 material to the branches throughout Queens. Um, but you know, in normal times, not pandemic and dire times, 
um, there are 11 branches in the um, senator's district. Um, and in those branches, we provide all the services that everybody requires and needs. Um, in fact, we have got two adult learning centers in his district. One is at um, Rochdale Village and Peninsula, where we, where our members provide um, education to people who do not know how to read or write English. Um, you know, and then all our branches do provide services to cater to the specific communities. Um, so we have uh, material in uh, foreign languages. We have um, collections that are developed by the by the by the employees at the branch, the librarians and the staff at the branch. Um, so we, yeah, that's who we represent. That's what we are. Um, so thank you again, Latoya, for inviting me and allowing me to speak at this. Awesome. Um, thank you so much, John. Thank you for sharing. Um, next up, just want to acknowledge, we want to acknowledge Gary Hillard uh, from um, 1199 SEIU. Just want to give him an acknowledgement. And I see we have um, this MacBook Pro. <laughs> Not sure. Uh, you want to unmute yourself and uh, announce yourself? MacBook Pro? No, it's not my joke. Um, my name is Nola Brooker. I'm the chief of staff for SSCU Local 371. And uh, I wasn't able to log in the other way. So I'm logging in under President Wells' um, link. So um, he said everything that we wanted to hear from the union. And uh, thank you so much for the forum. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, okay, uh, with that, uh, we're going to open it up uh, to uh, conversation. Um, we have a lot of interesting comments um, in the chat. I think it's uh, really interesting to just um, to acknowledge what your members are saying in our chat. Uh, but before we do that, I want to just uh, say, you know, Mr. Francois, uh, you touched on a lot. You guys, you talked about the fight, um, you know, with uh, to organize the unions and to get a call to action from the respective uh, elected officials. Can you speak more to that? Um, and along with your colleagues and, and share what are some of the uh, call to action steps that we need to take uh, to move forward to, uh, you know, to support our, our, our employees. Well, first of all, let me say this, you know, <clears throat> sometimes a lot of, especially on social media, I've noticed a lot of concerns and complaints. I, I, let's call them concerns, but there are complaints, but you know, I'm being nice about it. But a lot of the members, you know, and, and, and I want the members to know this, you know, I understand the complaints. I'm, I'm, I'm on social media so I can understand the complaints and hear the complaints and I can address the complaints. A lot of the negative complaints is not this forum to be on with those complaints, especially when you have communication with me and you can get in touch, in touch with me. I know negativity brings negativity, so people want, to, people want an audience. They want, to, they want attention. That's the way to get it. You know where to get that? Like yesterday. Come up and show up to these rallies because strength comes in numbers. Now, I told you before, if you want to make a difference, come with me because I'm going to be there fighting for you, but you, I need you behind me so we can fight together. It makes it better, it makes it stronger. That's what people see numbers, they, they react to like, oh my God, they ain't playing. They see 10 people, 15 people, 20 people, now nah, they're joking. If they see 200, 300, 4,000, they're like, oh my gosh, they're serious about the product, about the um, action they want to take. But members, you the union, you keep, I know we have, you come to us as a union, we're just administrators who bring your problems to a certain place to be, to be addressed. But you guys, look at the word union and see what it is. We all, to one as a union, we need to come and fight together. Yesterday was a good rally, but we need more people. I'm sorry. I need to see more members out there because, this, especially about city workers. Everybody talk about where's the pay at? Where's this at? Where are you? What are you doing? We're here. But you have to be there with me to make a difference. So rallies, marches, advocacy day, going to Albany for lobby day. You have to show up to these things. We need 10, 15 buses to go up and talk to your elected officials to make things happen. It ain't going to happen by itself. It's not an easy road to attain certain things that we need. Should it be? Yes, but it's not. We got to fight for what we, for we, for, uh, for what we want. But I mean, we got to 20, we're 23,000 strong in this local. It's not acceptable to have a few people come out to address the concerns 
when I, when I had a lot of these concerns on Facebook, and complaints on Facebook. Let's take that energy. Take that energy that you have on Facebook with the negativity complaints and bring it to the field. Bring it out there and put the boots on the ground to make it happen. That's how I need you guys. Come on out there. That same energy that I see people protesting out there for. A lot of people out there protesting. Take that same energy. Bring it to the voting poll. Stand up be counted for the census and stand up at the rallies to make it happen. Strength comes in numbers, guys. Let's make it happen. You're the union. Let's go for it. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Well, well said, Press. Thank you. Thank you, Wells, my brother, my mentor. Uh, Open discussion. Can I, jump, can, jump in. In. can I jump in for a minute? Hey, absolutely. Okay. Part of this focus is the state of the unions. A, a few years ago, there was a there was a court case where they thought they were going to kill the unions, and we survived that. The union membership is, is, is strong, and our activism. Just imagine what this would be if we had the unions to fight back against these layoffs. Just think about those people who don't have unions. What are they doing? So, so the state of the union, first of all, is we're not dead. We are on. Okay. Uh, uh, Sean and I and I appreciate Sean's uh, uh, frustration. I understand his frustration. That you know what the numbers are, are, are show that we're unified. Okay. And it gets the attention. Oh, this is a senator pitch anyway. Uh, gets the attention. What we need, what we're going to do moving forward, is continue to build on what we have. Okay, we're, we're not we're not dead, we're not dying, but if we're not around. Guess what? The workers are definitely at, at risk. Okay, our ability to negotiate, to fight, to organize, to hold people accountable, including our elected officials both within the union and outside of the union is part of our strength. So we do need you, as Sean said, on social media, but also when, when you can come out, you need to come out, okay? Because believe me, uh, 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 Senator Saunders and his colleagues, they, and they look and they hear who's talking in their district. And we have the ability to, to do that. And, and, and one other thing, I'm going to repeat myself again. I can't, say it, I can't say it enough. All workers who provide a service are were essential workers in this end. Whatever their role was, and we need to recognize all their roles while also highlighting the particulars. I got members also who worked in juvenile justice facilities. They've been there working 12 hour shifts when they only scheduled to work a 12 hour, eight hour shift. Okay, I got people working in Rikers Island who, who've, been, who've been working this whole time or in ACS stores to make sure children are safe and families are safe. So everybody has a role, we all have jobs to do. And we have a role and the best thing that we've done is we fulfill those roles. And now we're gonna fulfill another role of pushing back the attacks on working families and working people. And these attacks, folks, just exacerbate what we've already been through. People of color, communities of color, women. Brother Anthony, we um we are losing you if we haven't lost you. We'll give you another 10 seconds. We see your face, but not your voice. I apologize. Now you're back. Am I? Am I? Am I good? Wave your hand. Well, I'm you're sorry. back, but you hear me. but I'm about yeah, to call on the next person. I'm so just going to wrap up. I want to say that that once again, working people, women, people of color, and communities of color, are going to bear the brunt of layoffs as we have bear the brunt of violence and racial injustice. As we as we have bear the brunt of the COVID nineteen pandemic. And welcome. Good seeing you, Senator. Thank you for inviting us. Um, if I could just piggyback off what Anthony was talking about. Um, in the 2019, uh, CWA Local 1180 introduced legislation for the city to look at uh, wages for uh, employees of the city all across the board to see 
uh, if there were wage disparities. As you know, we, are, we had won an EEO case for women of color who were pay, underpaid. Um, so we introduced this legislation so that since we found it in our union, we wanted to know across the city if this was still happening. And we all know that it is. Um, and that there was a process that was supposed to be done to make sure that uh, the mayor would get a report as well as the city council to, to see what the wage disparities were. We started talking to them way back in September when the reports were supposed to be due, um, you know, late, no later than January of 2020. It never happened. The report never came out. We, we still don't know what the wage disparities are. COVID came, and so that became the excuse as to why that didn't happen. In this crisis, the numbers of minorities, both uh, Blacks and Latinos that died because of COVID-19 shows that there's a disparity in the health system. Um, then we got into the George Floyd killing and it just was a, a bomb on top of another bomb. And it, we continue to see that there is systemic racism in this country. Then as we get through COVID, the numbers go down in New York, then the, the progressive mayor that we have starts talking about layoffs instead of talking about things like um, taxing the rich, what a concept um doing little things like the tax the the um stock transfer tax giving it back to the city rather than go back to wall street where they are doing very well in this pandemic the rich are getting richer you know it's it's i i i use the word unconscionable but there's a worse word <laughs> it's despicable and disgusting that you would use essential workers to be your scapegoat in a time of crisis who sacrificed, sacrificed so many things during this pandemic. Um, and, and today we are constantly giving our members information on going to counseling and getting, um, uh, speaking to somebody because our people are in uh, traumatic distress right now. Um, a lot of people are suffering from PSDs. They lost loved ones and they couldn't have a regular funeral for them. They couldn't see them while they were in the hospital um, dying. It's, it's, it's just, I just don't know where this is coming from. The state of the union is that we have to make sure that we protect our workers. And that comes from the top all the way down. And I'm talking about from the president. You know this president that we have right now I, I can't find the word for him. And if I did find it, I couldn't say it publicly. Voting <laughs> in this November election, we need to vote like our life depends on it. We cannot have this man do another four years. Um, do you, you see there's fighting and protesting in the streets now. I don't know what's gonna happen if this man stays in office. We have to be active in our communities. We have to be active um, making sure that we help people who haven't been able to get out to vote to make sure that they vote. We have to make sure we got a couple of more days for that census to be done. We got to keep pushing the census um, so that we get our numbers in New York. There's just so much work to do. You, you talk about if you can't go in the streets for whatever reason, there's other things that you can do. Talk to your neighbors. You know, uh, you go to the grocery store, talk to the people in the grocery, did you fill out your census? We are a community. We work in a community, so we have to talk to one another and try to make things right. Um, I, I have, I during this six months that we've been quote unquote locked down and having to deal with all the things that have going on, um, I, the frustration and and I can say anger sometimes, especially seeing what's happening with. Uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, and then you have the right who says that, you know, all lives matter. If all lives matter, we wouldn't need to say Black Lives Matter. Um, and some people just don't get it. But uh, I just want to keep saying to our members, it's important to vote and not only in this big election, but your local elections. 
um, the people that you represent in your community, like Senator Sanders, these are people that we need. Um, and uh, just don't forget how close being a civil servant is to being active in your community. Uh, and I could go on and on, but I know we're limited in time and I want other people to talk. Thanks. Thank you, Sister Middleton. Good to see my friends. Good to see you all. I apologize for being late. Uh, it's especially good to see uh, uh, the president of my local, Anthony Wells. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and if you take off the last letter on his name, that's what we all want. Uh, <laughs> and, and we want him to be well. Yes. Uh, and thank God for that. And, and may you live up to your name for a long time. And may the rest of us, for, for those who don't know, uh, I, I heard my brother had a cold recently. And so that's what I'm talking about for those who don't know. Um, my friends, Queens is, Southeast Queens especially, is in a very unique spot. And um, and I got all of my, some of my best friends gathered with me. And, and, and let me show you something. In a few days, if we are blessed, Queens may have the head of foreign affairs of Congress. The Congressman Meeks stands at the cusp of becoming the chair of foreign affairs. No black man has ever done this. Mm -hmm. This would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, one or two of you, of you may know that the Congressman and me have not seen things eye to eye. <laughs> uh, however, let me be clear with you that would be an amazing step forward. Then in a few days, if that's not enough, you may have, you will have, God willing, a borough president coming out of Southeast Queens that most of y'all helped create. I am the chair of banking. I mean, we have gathered a certain amount of force. And the reason for this force is because of the union movement. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. Y'all have done this uh, collectively, uh, Brother John and Brother Francois and, and others. You guys created this. Now, how do we use this? If it ain't a tool, what good is it? If, it, if these folk ain't doing what you need, get rid of them and get some other folk. They, we need to use this tool. We should not be, I, I just got off the phone with the, with the mayor a few minutes ago. It's been a very interesting day. We need to have conversations with the, all of these folk and say, look, these folk ain't by themselves. The union movement ain't by itself. If you move against them, you are moving against us and we're clear. And now the mayor needs desperately Albany to do stuff, as we all do, let's be clear. Um, and I, I've been taking an issue with him about uh, this tax lien stuff that's going to mess with all of your members because it's taking their homes away. That's basically foreclosure. It's taking their homes away. And it's really hitting our, our community hard. We need to make Southeast Queens a bastion. It, this needs to be your castle. This needs to be your impregnable place where nobody, where your fight starts here and these politicals are doing the will of the people. And all of y'all live here or, or have in major places here. I mean, we, we see each other at the supermarket. We see each other here and there. You need to get these folk to get right. Now, how do we go about and do it? And let me show you one example. You spoke of the stock transfer tax. Do you know that's my bill? I, I miss the stock transfer. Uh, I got the strongest one. There's two of them out. One says we'll take $3 billion from the, from the super rich. 
Mine says take $13 billion from them because that will take the whole whole. Uh, Three billion is good, but it won't, it won't save you from layoffs. You got a whole of $13 billion. Three billion will not save you from layoffs. 13 billion will. So how do we come up with uh, legislation that you want us to carry? Y'all need to help shape it. Y'all need to do it. Kennedy Airport's here. If they ain't doing right by the workers, we all need to shut it down. We, we need to do, man, when are y'all gonna use your power? And I'm a, I'm a pick on people. And, 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 and pick on uh, you first, uh, Brother Francois. When are you going to use your power? You second, Ms. Rosemary. I'm, I'm going to come to you too, but I'm going to hit Francois first. How are we going to use that power? But he has to unmute himself. Yes, yeah, so Brother Sanders, first of all, thank you for having me, brother. Thanks for always uh, having these type of forums and this type of platform because it's well needed. And uh, you know, you and I work together for so many years and stuff. And that's something I want to continue to do. And if you know me, brother um, Sanders, my power has always been within me. There's nothing new, there's nothing nothing to, to, to gain. That's already, that's already in my soul. My power is, is my power. When I started this job as a DOE and I seen injusticeness, when I seen things that going right, when I seen not getting paid properly, when I seen in, 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 in improprieties, when I seen unsafe conditions, that became my power. Yes. I became the power of the people, okay? They energized me to make sure that I was their voice, that I continue to be their voice. That's what I'm here for. That's my power. Yep. Now, now let me add, and then I'm going to get to Sister Rose Marie. I want us to sharpen the blade. I want us to come up with a union agenda that we want these electors, myself included, too long y'all have depended on us and said, okay, go and do good things, go do the right thing. Most of us do. Most of us do. But we need to, we need to go sharper in the days to come. Y'all need a union agenda for Southeast Queens and say this is the agenda. The first and foremost, no layoffs, straight out. No, no layoffs. In fact, we need we need increases. Uh, that we should have a different conversation. No layoffs. Take it from the rich this time. We ain't we ain't doing it this time. But what is the union? What and, and I'm being unfair to you, brother Francois. I'm being unfair to all of you. And it's it's really I sh I should be shamed, but I, I'm a senator, so I gave up on shame. Uh, I I have nothing left. That's why I'm a senator. So under those conditions, um, I'm encouraging us to come up with here is our union agenda that you sit down with all of your local electives, even if we do it by Zoom, and say, not only do you agree, which you know most of them will give you the good amen, but who will champion what? Who will champion, who's, and who's gonna, and we want you to back it. Don't just say he's the champion, he, you send him out by himself and he gets shot down and that's the end of it. But all of us have to back it a union agenda. And that's what I'm talking about. And, and you don't have to have one right now, Brother Francois. I just want you to think more than anything, just think of it. Uh, you know, Brother Anthony is one of them thinking fellas. He could come up with 15, 20 things that nobody, nobody besides himself ever thought of. <laughs> and that's before breakfast. But, but we ain't gonna bring him in yet. We're gonna go to Sister uh, Rosemarie first, and good to see you all. So good to see you all. Rosemarie, you jumped off, Senator. Okay. Well, then, John, if they if they ain't here, and I'm just picking on people, John, you up? What do you right. think? Um, thank you, Senator, for putting me on the spot like this. Yeah, <laughs> just doing uh, my job. At least today I can get the Sean Francois uh, treatment. Um. You know, in the media, we have the, these layoffs, these 22,000 proposed layoffs. Um, and Anthony mentioned this, I'm gonna digress a second. Anthony mentioned this lawsuit that, um, that we lost, Jan the Janus lawsuit that we lost a few years ago. And that 
pretty people predicted the death knell of public sector unions. And that is not happening. Um, we are stronger. I would, I would argue we are stronger than ever. And right now, much more needed. We've heard from all of us um, talking about what unions have done to protect its workers through the pandemic um, and continuing through the pandemic. But right now, the agenda that will help every New York City resident and every New York City employee and, you know, in southeastern, southeastern Queens, which is heavily unionized, um, what the MLC is working on to prevent layoffs is vital. Um, and that's where our energies right now are being put, I think, and it justifiably so. We need you and your fellow assembly members, your fellow senators to vote for what this, the MLC is saying for, because the, the, the um, early retirement incentive, that needs to be dealt with. Um, the borrowing, the mayor needs to commit to no layoffs. If he's going to get this money, he needs to commit to say, I'm not going to lay off anybody with this money. Um, um, there's, there's, some, uh, there's the refinancing of the, the debt. The, the, and just for your, the audience's um, edification, the Municipal Labor Committee is a consortium of fellow uh, municipal unions, the UFT, uh, Sanitation, the NYPD, the Fire, DC 37, CSEA, um, uh, uh, CWA 1190 um, and others, um, OSA. <clears throat> These are all city unions. So we work together. We have our arguments, we have our differences, but we work together to fight for all of us. Um, and our agenda right now is just to save people's jobs. Queens Library, my fellow live Brooklyn and New York Public Library workers are not on the chopping block, but we are going to be uh, the after effect. If there's layoffs for the city. Too with us and you guys. And so the MLC, that's our agenda right now to think about what the future is after this, um, these layoffs, we got to deal with the pandemic um, and helping workers to get through the pandemic because that's not going away yet, no matter what Trump says. Um, and, and the future we haven't, I haven't thought about what the future brings, but I will think about it and definitely be a part of that because we, Queens Library workers, live in your district, Queens Library workers work in your district um, in Southeastern Queens. Um, and yeah, and we're happy that Donovan is now the borough president because he's Donovan Richards, he's gonna be, he's not the borough president yet. He has to go through an election, but I can't imagine him losing. Um, he's going to be a strong advocate for libraries and libraries will provide a lot of useful services for everyone. Well, Dermot, I'm not going to leave you out of this. You know I like picking on you. Uh, my day is not good unless I pick on Dermot. Uh, and my day is going to be good. Dermot, why doesn't the union movement have an agenda for Southeast Queens? Why don't we, why isn't this place the most adamant, the most zealous union I mean, you, why aren't these electeds the most zealous? I mean, we should be out of our minds union. I mean, every time we turn around, there's more union. Um, why isn't this happening, sir? And why aren't y'all making it happen? Well, good morning to you too, Senator. Um, <laughs> I, I, I believe we are. I mean, one of the things that uh, uh, it's important to say is that in, in a time of crisis, such as this, I mean, this is the biggest crisis with the city's probably ever faced, uh, definitely in generations. In a time of crisis, uh, I believe leadership is really tested, right? That's when you see, that's when you see priorities. And a person's priorities reveal a lot about them too. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when uh, President Francois brought up earlier that, you know, the mayor talked about laying off workers, I, I said, you know, and, I'll, and we all agree that even the mention of that in this crisis to, to, to touch our New York heroes is, is shameful. Uh, we all get that with this pandemic brought in its wake that came a, a financial crisis that's not going to go away for a while. And we have to navigate through that. And the importance of unions are, as, as people see, and everyone watching here, I hope sees, it is in that union boat, in that union ship, I should say, that we're all gonna get through this together. 
We'll, we'll get through it together because union members are very, very loyal. We've been battle tested many times. I remember those last four years of uh, Michael Bloomberg in which he threatened layoffs every single budget cycle. And uh, we, we, we pushed back on that and survived that. And we did that with the help of all of our members standing together and going into this war together, into this battle together. But we also did it with elected officials like yourself, Senator Sandler. And in Southeast Queens, let me not side skip the, the, the question. We have an abundance of membership down there. Uh, we have an abundance of loyal elected officials who know the value of unions, appreciate the value of unions. And we have that in most of the city, right? Unions are the bedrock to the middle class. I always say to, my, to the, the members, if they want to know, because you know, some people are fairly new in and don't have that experience or understanding of the value of unions. Look at the job you do, and then look around the country at that same job or around the city at that same job in a non-union title. And then you'll fully appreciate the package that your job comes with, the protections that it comes with, and uh, the force that it comes with. People can talk about layoffs. People can talk about a lot of things. New York City's heroes, the working men and women of this city that have brought us through this crisis uh, uh, with honor and with dignity are not going to be pushed to the side. I know elected officials like yourself, Senator Saunders, are not going to let that happen. I know the leaderships of all these unions are not going to let that happen. I know the leadership of my union, President Michael Mulgrew, is not going to let that happen. And we're going to get through this. And we'll come through. There are places where money can be found. There's places where money can be. It's there. It's not even to be found. It's right there. People have to start looking for it and stop ignoring the pockets that we need to go into to keep this city going, to keep this city as great as it is and make it even a, an even better city. None of any member of the UFT that's listening in to this, I want to be very, very clear. Uh, uh, I, want to, I want to speak on behalf of Michael uh, Mulgrew. There, there's... He is a battle-tested leader. He is a great leader of a union and he is not going to let any one of our members down. And I know every union on a representative uh, and president on this panel right now, we're all going to come together on that big ship. We're going to get that through this storm. This is only one of a multitude of storms that are coming over the next few years that are gonna be these financial crises. But the bedrock of the middle class and the labor movement is, going to, is going to be what gets them through them. And there'll be no more talk of laying off the heroes of New York City, or there shouldn't be. Right before I, I get to my next, and I'm gonna pick on all of y'all because I love you. That I, I mean, I, I truly do love y'all, and y'all put up with me somehow. Don't ask me how. Um, let me say a couple of things. When we speak of stock transfer tax, just for you to know, my bill says for less than $500 in stock, it is um, 1.4 pennies for every $500 up to 500, one, one penny and a quarter is the tax that we're putting on, on the stock. Meaning that you won't feel it. For more than $500, we're saying five cents per stock. Now my friends, that on one hand is so small that you're saying to yourself, who would argue this? But that will re result in $13 billion to the coffer, um, which will get us out of this hole and keep a good city that we need. Now, people talk about essential workers. Now, let me give you another name. I never believed in, in all of this hoopala over essential workers. I never fell for it. Another name for essential workers are sacrificial workers. The workers that we can sacrifice. Uh, and they're proving this by when their times get tough, who are the first guys that they're talking about? Kicking into the street. Now I say this because my district did the second highest level of dying in New York State. The Rockaways had the second highest level of dying in New York State. And I, I, I remind you all that I come out of the union movement, but you may not know that my local saved my job. 
My job was slated to be, I was a young man with a young child trying to make it work in New York. And they said, your job title is over. Y'all are finished. Goodbye. And I was in a world of pain because, you know, I, what do you do now? Uh, my local got up there and said, no, we are not. That's not going to happen. They fought and they saved my job. I know what unions do. My mother was eleven ninety nine, but one at a time. So under those conditions, um, I would love to return a historical favor, if you wish. I would love to pay it forward. Uh, it was paid forward to me. Uh, my mother was a domestic that, and she we cleaned people's homes. But when she became eleven ninety nine, the food table took a turn. We started eating better. There was more. There was more food, and I discovered there's more than just chicken. And uh, though my name is Sanders, that's all right. There was more than just chicken. Um, I I found that you could wear shoes more than one day a week to church. That we actually, I actually had a pair of shoes that I could wear every day, thanks to my mother becoming eleven ninety nine. So I know what the union means on on the day to day, and I don't have to. You you always had me. Uh, even if most of you decide, nope, I'm going to be this way and y'all ain't going to change. So, so I'm ready for the fight. Now we've got to, we're in the fight of our lives and I want everybody to weigh in and I don't see a name up here. I just see that somebody has Mac, Mac Pro iPhone and then my list say Rosemary, but uh, I, all right, I want, whoever had not spoken, I need you to weigh in. And you got to unmute yourself. <laughs> I just did. Yeah, you hear me, Senator? Okay, first of all, I'm a proud former resident of Southeast Queens, first graduated this morning high school. Uh, much Get louder, South much Queens louder. Than that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me try it again. Say, I'm a, I'm a. Now, Brother Wells, you will be, they must not want you to speak because you're not coming in. I, I think oh, wait, it's wait, a wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I got, I got another method. <laughs> how about, how about, how about that one? This, this works. How about, okay, wait a second. Okay, now we go. He got that? Yes, I, I hear my, you better. That's my backup. <laughs> so, so here, let me say it again. First time graduate, August, first graduating class of August Martin High School. Okay, wait. I lived in Cambridge High School. I came from Best Style. And I got to recuperate okay. and still okay. continue to recuperate in Lawton. So I know about Southeast Queens. You're not, you, so two things. We all know here, so, the first thing is so stop the label. First and how we gonna make all South first Queens better? We get our Living members to hold all you elected officials and you accountable and still while you're in office. Recuperate and your bill is great. So I know about South. Shouldn't not be Queens. hearing about it today for the you're first not, time. So to get that out to us. To I agree with you that here. um people be the first thing to pay those who can afford to pay should pay while you're in office. Mr. Wells, you can mute your other phone, please. Uh coming in as an echo. You can mute your other phone. Okay, I'll get your phone off. Okay, okay. Okay. It's done. Is that better? Those okay, who can go afford ahead. Okay, so so your bill, which obviously we would support because we're tired of having the middle class and the working class people. Uh, put all the bills in the, in the city, and that can bring $13 billion that bodes well for the future. For right now, as the MLC is meeting with the mayor, your leadership, your conference must be committed to doing everything necessary to prevent layoffs. And we take, and we believe in two things, uh, uh, early retirement incentives, okay, which, which may need a little mon monetary help, okay, and then give the mayor with conditions that are necessary to borrow okay. money and then meet okay. it. If your, if your bill was to be successful, that can pay off whatever money that was borrowed. It can also help 
for the future. I, I don't view you as putting us on the spot. We're all leaders in this room and we ought to be responsible to our members and you ought to be responsible to your constituents. Your history is, is well, you work well together. But you know what? We are not a monolithic, we able to for a monolithic uh, 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 voice. No, we represent various interests with a common interest and the common ground is the union. Yes. So what we must come up with, James, is 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 how how do we mix all our interests together to achieve what we need? The residents of Southeast Queens should be a focus because they are small businesses in Southeast Queens, and they need the same things that other communities need. Okay, they need financial help. They need security. Okay, they need they need responses to crime. They need social services. Okay, they need to make sure their schools and their libraries are safe and functioning and contributing to the community. Okay, Southeast Queens happens to be a, a not only is a strong union district, it's a strong voting block. And I yes. implore you and your colleagues in Southeast Queens, or most of what we know, to do like we're going to do in the union movement. Find that common ground. Okay, find that because we're in a war, and for the future, nobody in this room knows how the future is going to look. But we all have the responsibility to help shape that future. And the union movement will be there, as well as the social movements, Black Lives Matter, fights for racial equality and justice. We're all intertwined, James. And what your colleagues got to understand is they have a responsibility outside of just getting reelected. That's like we have a responsibility other than just getting reelected. If you're not going to be effective, Get out the way. If you're only looking at your box, and I said this yesterday at the rally, if you're only looking at your box, you're in the way. This is not about what I can get from my members. It's about what we need to make sure first that nobody loses a job and those people who work seasonal, who we're not talking about, who did lose their jobs, get taken care of. So, so that's our first common goal, okay? We support the teachers and the schools being safe. We all do that, whether we have kids or not, okay? We support the libraries, whether we utilize them or not, because there are people who utilize these services. And therefore, we gotta support all the workers, not just the ones who are at risk of being laid off, but the ones who must go back into these centers mm -hmm. and these offices and make sure that they have the safety as needed. So you kept me quiet, I'm quiet now. And I'd like to also hear some of these questions that our members are put, giving you, James, because this is a very great opportunity. I appreciate you. I thank you. And the war continues. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna come out on the right side of this. And if people do right, they're gonna come out on the right side of history. Thank you, Sister Glory. Hi, um, Senator. So you want to know how we can work with? With her, you with in particular, her, and uh, Southie Quinn to to get the power and to to make the change. Um, I'm so glad you told us that you are proposing a stock transfer tax. Um, you know, my local, even the former president, has been talking about that for decades, and nobody was listening. Um, now that <laughs> now that we're in this crisis, what better time to initiate this? Um, along with the stop transfer tax i can't say often enough you need to tax the rich new york has more millionaires and billionaires than any other state and it seems like that's a bad word tax the rich um just to let you know we do have borough committee meetings in every borough we have one in queens because we are concerned about not only our members that live in these communities, but the community itself. They all go together. Um, we do ask our uh, political leaders to come to those meetings. If When we have a specific agenda, that's when they come in and they talk to us. So I, don't, I believe you have been invited to those meetings and have attended, and we will continue to do that as we go through the pandemic. We will not be meeting together and in person, mm -hmm. but we, we have set it up so that we can meet virtually. Um, we have found those meetings to be so important and um, enlightening to the community as well as to our members. And we will we intend to continue to do that. 
And just piggybacking off of my two brothers from DC 37, I am also a part of the steering committee of MLC. So I know that they're meeting and we need you to do just what Anthony and John said. Um, the buyout package, I, the members are asking me, we just had a meeting uh, two nights ago and that was the number one question <laughs> in our inbox when it came to the members, is there a package being offered? Because our seasoned people, first of all, they're frightened to go to work. If some of our members are 50 and above, you know, as uh, we're a minority based union, mostly union. So they are more susceptible because they are the, the ones that the pandemic hit the worst. So if they're able to get out, they're ready to get out. Mm -hmm. um, the re refinancing of the debt or the loan that the mayor is asking for. I know he has to be accountable as to what that money is being used for, and he should be accountable. I understand that. Um, but we need the assembly to work with him to make sure that there is not one essential, um, or I would say what my brother said, sacrificial worker laid off at this time. And, and just one other note, when it came to the Janice case, as my brother said, they thought that they were gonna kill the union. What it has done is grow, grown the union. People who are in private sectors are now saying they want to join the union because they see what mm. happens when a crisis like this happens. The only people that still maintain their jobs were union members. Um, and you know it provides job security. It, provides benefit they never got in the private sector. We have grown to, we were something like 8,200 when Janice started. We are over 9,000 members right now. And we recently accreted another 500 and we're getting uh, nonprofits to join the union. So uh, unions are important. People are realizing it across the, the country. I'm part of the National Union of CWA um, we're losing people because of the pandemic as far as jobs, because we also have people in private sector that lost jobs due to the pandemic. But those uh, industries that can be unionized, they are, they are begging to get on board. So um, I just want you to know, we, we know how important it is to talk to our politicians and make them accountable. And yes, you know CWA, if you are not, Accountable, we do not support you your next election. <laughs> I, you you know that first thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I have been, you all have been clear with me, and I it's been, I have learned to stay on the good side of the night. <laughs> in fact, with every union up there, I have learned that it's far better to stay on the, the less than business side of yes, the night. Yes. <laughs> and I think it's great. We'll hear from one more union person, and then Latoya will find whatever questions that the, that the audience wants to deal with. Is there another union leader who wants to speak on this issue before we open it up to the floor? Well, let me redeem myself, Brother Sanders. How about that? <laughs> I, I like it. You, you just being yourself, Sean. <laughs> no, but let me just sorry. I mean, there's a common, there's a common thing here, as we know. I mean, everybody's agenda. When you say agenda, we all have an agenda. We all have a common agenda, first of all, for our members. I think every union here, first of all, can contest the raises. That, that, that's, that's the foremost thing the members yeah. need. Let's, 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 talk, let's talk the real talk. If you want to talk about some agenda, I got you. Okay, we can talk with the members. They want some raises. They, that's the form. And anything else, raises and benefits. Okay? Also, my union primarily is working on longevity as well. That's a part of our agenda as well, longevity. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times after 15 years, you get maybe a little increase. But if you did 25 years, 30 years, you, st you should get another increase. It should be incremental throughout the time you're there, not just one time. Okay, so we're working on better longevity as well, better uh, for, for people that did for, uh, the work for a long time. Like I said, raises, benefits, we're working on, and also from, particularly for my question guards, to be paid on certain holidays. A lot of these holidays, people are getting, they're not getting paid. They gotta be home wow. and, and with no payment at all. Like right wow. now, Labor Day's coming right now. Labor Day's coming. They don't get paid for that. Wow. So these are the agendas we're working on to get them paid and stuff like that. Better benefits, better raises, better, um, better, better, um, better, just better overall monetariness in their pocket. That's what they're looking for. A lot of members, to be honest with you. And that's what they're looking for. So $15 an hour right now is a push. I mean, we came a long way from seven and a half to 15, which is double, just about. Never did that before in life. But and in New York City, 
uh, Brother Sanders talk about agenda. That's bad agenda. That's a bad agenda because it doesn't work here. It's not suffice. At least you need thirty-two an hour minimum. Thirty-two dollars an hour minimum to to pass the poverty line in New York City. Okay, so that's part of my agenda. I got some more for you, brother. But I just want to give you a little start. You'll say just do a little, a little redemption. That's all it was. All right. <laughs> well, I appreciate the sampler that you were giving me, uh, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take it upon myself to individually meet with uh, by Zoom, of course, with each one of you, so I can hear individually. But I'm encouraging you all to to go out the box on this one. I'm encouraging you all to take this Zoom and get every single Southeast Queens elected official and say, there's no place like home, there's no place in New York City that has more union per square inch. And under those conditions, here's what, and you all figure out, you know, what's first, second, and third, you know, all of that good stuff. I, I know better than to tell you your business. I can barely handle my business. So under those conditions, and, and most of y'all know that. So under those conditions, um, if y'all came up and said, I don't know, around 10 of y'all, imagine if there's 10 and each one of you picked a thing, one thing and said, here is the one thing, and but y'all had 10 things that you presented. I mean, come on, you got the most seasoned leaders out sitting with you. The chair of, I mean, of financial, uh, what is that? Foreign affairs, man, we ain't, man, that's unbelievable. Uh, and, I, and I'm speaking as, 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 as a former critic. That's unbelievable. Um, you got chair of banking. For, you got chair of government ops at the Senate. That's Cymru. Government ops, my friends. Ain't that, ain't that what y'all were saying? Uh, you, got, you got Vanel up there with technology doing some stuff. I don't even know every other word he, you know, I understand, but that's all right. As long as he's doing something good, and it is good. I'm not, I'm not knocking him. I'm knocking me. Uh, you got all, and then you got, man, we got that woman, uh, Alicia, not, not Alicia, but um, Adrian Adams is hoping, she hasn't to told me, but little birds, hoping to be the speaker of New York City. We got all kinds of stuff happening right here that y'all need to organize and all of these folk need to be just so zealous that y'all have to pull them back and say, would you stop being so union? Union, Y'all need to be pulling us back and say, y'all are, are too union, move back. Uh, and until that day happens, I, I know John doesn't believe that day is gonna happen in the next five minutes, uh, but that's all right. Until that day happens, we need to do, and y'all need to do a Zoom where you have all of us and say, here is your agenda for Southeast Queens that we, that, that, that y'all will be looked at. Now, we don't have to tell you how you're gonna be looked, you, you basically know, but we do wanna see how you're fighting. How are you fighting? You say early retirement, I like it. Uh, sound good to me, um, and certainly, uh, don't borrow if we don't need, because borrowing means that we give it to our children. That all we're doing is putting our children in debt uh, when if the rich just pay five cents more per share. Five cents, come on, man. I got they throw nickels cents. away. Five cents. Now, the, now the argument is that they're going to leave town, that you're going to lose some billionaires. Now, if you're going to lose them over five cents, you never had them. Uh, and you will lose a certain amount. Let's let, suppose you lose a certain amount, but you keep not, you don't, you won't feel it. The majority will stay if you stay reasonable. If you stay to five cents and stuff like that, you're not going to lose these people. Uh, I spoke enough. Latoya, is there anything that anybody in the audience but, wants to question, but, comment, or statement? Wait, since Senator, Senator, before you can you Oh, me? yes, I stand, I'll hold. Okay, just, just real quick. I just got to disagree on one thing. 
in the short term, there has to be borrowing. Okay? okay. In, in the short term, there has to be borrowing to stop these layoffs. Okay? okay. I agree with you on the long term. And and I agree with and I like your plan. But but I I have to react to yes, right now, because there are people who are saying the mayor ought not be allowed to to borrow any money. And and, and, and people had, and Scott said yesterday he don't need to, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's show that for the media, where the money is for the media. I'm not, they're not gonna make all these cuts they wanna do. I'm not prepared to sit down and let all the elected officials fight back and forth about when we can and when we shouldn't. Right now, 22,000 people are gonna lose their job. And part of that solution right now can include and should include borrowing even if it's for a short term if it's for a little bit with conditions and if later on we get your bill passed that will absorb that debt so i'm i'm very concerned about the future also but right now we got an immediate problem and those same people who worry about their future their kids are going to suffer now if we don't stop these layoffs okay i just want to say that and then i'm not going to be quiet i'm with you with a caveat and the danger to it that New York and all of us are short-sighted, that once we solve the, pro solve the problem, that we say, all right, we don't have to move towards anything. Um, but I agree with you. If it takes borrowing to save these immediately, then let's do it. But we should take that other money and pay back the borrowing real quick so that we're not putting it on our children and our grandchildren. And we could have our cake and eat it too. We could have both. That's why I love you. Uh. <laughs> and you know, I'll make sure that talk, stock transfer tax gets done. Yeah, yeah. I think all the unions are with you with that. <laughs> I, I stole it from off and you might as well. It's really yours. But don't, we won't tell anybody that I really took it from off. Go, go on. Latoya, what you got? Awesome. We just have a couple of statements um, from the members. We have John here. He says, uh, we as delegates and members have to get in the fight. It's not just about the leadership. Fight for your jobs. Fight for your family. Uh, 371, a mighty. Uh, we have another comment that you guys may want to uh, speak to. Pope says, so many school safety agents have passed away, and I don't think many people are aware of that because they are not considered essential workers. But yet, after schools were closed, they were assigned to train stations and parks all over New York City without proper safety equipment. Anybody want to speak to that? Gregory Floyd's going to have to step up on that on that one there because you're talking about in his department. That's Greg Floyd's department. So uh, I don't think he's like I'm, what I'm hearing. I'm sure he don't like that type of stuff. But knowing him, he's from Southeast Queens as well, That just by the way. Knowing Gregory Floyd, he's on top of that. Knowing his, knowing, knowing where he is. So, yeah, I'm sure he's on top of that, Latoya. I'm sure he is. Miss Victoria Flack says, the new American Chamber of Commerce supports unions. We invite each one of the union representatives on this forum to an interview for Labor Radio. How may we contact you? Okay, I'll put it in the chat. Norman says, thank you, President Wells and Team Union for all that you do to fight for our state. Uh, stay healthy and safe. We love you guys. Blessings to you all. Victoria, let me, I'm here. let me just thank everybody from a personal level for, as, as Senator said, for, for uh, your prayers and your support uh, when I was down in my battle and for my particular local, for continuing to do the work that we do every day. So all you guys, okay, what local you're from? Uh, and I, I felt your prayers and, and prayers work. So I want to just say thank you to all of you, okay? You know, we need you, Anthony. <laughs> we had a little talk. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is. I was just gonna jump in for a second. I wanna just, I have to get off. I have to go to another uh, meeting, but I wanted to thank the panelists. I wanna thank you again, Senator Saunders for hosting these town halls. I, some of your colleagues have been doing it. I hope more do it as we, we go move further down this road. Because as I say, even for us with the opening of the schools, the, the issues that are coming are gonna be plentiful. The things that we have to deal with are going to be many. 
And if we all do it together, I believe we're going to get through this for our members, for our communities, and for the city of New York. The city of New York deserves to be be a safe city with this virus and and everything else that's coming down. So thank you again. And uh, Mr. Wells, it's good to see you back and I'm glad that you, uh, you, you're doing well. To everybody, um, thank you. And uh, have a good weekend. It's a Labor Day weekend, so enjoy. Right, Darren, Darren, all of you by the Labor Darren. Movement. Good to see you, Darren. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Darren. Give my best to Michael and Leroy. Absolutely, absolutely, everybody. Take care, okay? All right, take it easy, brother. Awesome. Latoya. Next, next question is, how can our elected offices work more closely with your members in, in the district on the ground during these most trying and historic times? Well, I'll, I'll take a shot at that. And we all had to learn. There was a, a learning curve that all of us needed to do. Um, and it, the first thing that we discovered was we needed PPE. Remember, remember the early days of this crisis where the first thing you discovered was nobody had PPE. We didn't even know what PPEs were. <laughs> we didn't even know what they were. And then the stuff that we felt was natural, we looked around for some liquid soap and that was gone. <laughs> I mean, we found ourselves in a bizarre time that none of us were ready for, and we should learn from that. Now, that's important because Trump just cut off uh, the city from using, uh, from uh, getting PPEs and, you, and paying for people to clean the schools and other things. He should be ashamed of himself. He's killing people uh, and that will kill people. However, the electeds can step up there, and if Brother Sean, especially, I guess this, and, and the UFT, find themselves short on stuff, and we will, then we need to hit these corporations that are forever coming to us, trying to impress us, and we need to say, y'all need to give us PPEs so we can deal with this school and this place and that place, and we can deal that way, and that's one of the ways that we can deal concretely. Uh, we also need, of course, to stand shoulder to shoulder, and some of us did, when your members are dying, we need to get out there and go to the place and say what your perhaps cannot say or don't want to say, uh, and say, wait a minute, this stuff got to stop. The, you know, these are, you will call them essential, but you use them like sacrificial. Uh, now, which is it? Are they sacrificial? Are they essential? Um, so there, there are ways, but I would, I would argue that it's going to be y'all who come up with more ways to use us. And I mean use in the best sense of the word, of course. That y'all have to come up with creative ways and say, okay, uh, here's what you can do. Um, most electors are not necessarily the most creative of people, my friend. So we really could use your help there. If no response, next one from Latoya. I, I have so I, I have I have a something to add to that. DC thirty seven does have a political action department, and <clears throat> they are asking. They're constantly asking for volunteers to advocate for DC 37 issues um, and union issues, <clears throat> including the right now the census, uh, DC 37 is asking for volunteers from its membership to contact members to sign up for the census. So we're, a union is only as good as its members um, and members participation. And that's what we need. We need our members to participate. Uh, your leadership does stuff. We do a lot of things and not everything we see, <clears throat> but uh, the, the executive director, Henry Garrido, is constantly calling each elected official. Whenever there's a problem from, from the library, library issues to social service issues to school issues to EMS issues, he's always cons he's constantly calling our elected officials. He's one person. Sean does stuff, Anthony does stuff, Oren Bar Barzalay has done a lot of stuff, head of the uh, EMS workers. 
but we need our membership to do things too. And DC 37 has a lots of volunteer opportunities to where we can advocate for ourselves. So, so, so James, just real quick also, what I tell my members to do is hold y'all accountable. Hold you, James, Senator Sounders, and go to your offices, write letters to you and tell you what we need. We're not going to, I, I really don't have time to do to direct the elected officials. That's not my job. Okay? okay. We have our agenda. We have our issues. And we get you to pay attention. And then once you know about it, you're obligated to say, hey, union, what can I do to help support your members, my constituents? I, I, I don't have the energy or the time to be creative for for, for you, you have your own responsibilities, but that doesn't mean we can't work together to get it done. I encourage my members to get involved with the union. I encourage them to get involved with you. Call your district office and say, how can I be helpful to you in my community? We actually, we, we encourage our people to, to join community boards. There are so many vacant seats on community boards in this city that we can just walk in and have influence on, on we, we, we encourage them to join the police councils so we encourage our members to be a part of that process. But, but, but let me be clear about this. We encourage them to be active in their community and to hold the people who they elect in their communities, Southeast Queens particularly, but throughout the city to say, hey, listen, here's what we need as constituents. Here's what we need as a union movement because we're on the same page. Uh, 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 you guys and we are representing the same people. So I just wanna, I just wanna say that, but I don't wanna, I, I will not say that I'm going to sit there and tell all these. No, nah, that's y'all get elected. Y'all got a job to do. Reach out to us, work together, and, and let's get it done. Okay. Well, I'm talking, Anthony, brother Anthony, uh, Mr. President, about new situations. Like all of us got hit with COVID-19 and had no idea what the hell. We didn't even know that it existed. Uh, I mean, I think it stands for something, COVID. What does that, anyway, I don't fully understand. I don't think it's a fake illness point of information. That's that right wing foolishness that I'm not into that. But, but, but we all need to figure out if there is a way that, that, that let's take Sean's folk. That, now they catching, I mean, you know, they were catching more hell than probably just about, well, than than many people. I'll be safe. Um, now we all were looking, and we didn't know how to hand to, how to help. We didn't know we. I mean, we we wanted to help, but how do you help? If you come up with something and say, "Why don't you come?" We could use you doing or or. As a motivation for our people, we need you to come serve food or I don't know, something that we could do. I don't, I don't know. That's what I'm talking about. That's not telling me, uh, Sanders, from nine hours from nine to five, you will do this, this, and this. That's saying here's something more creative that we could use. We could use you showing up, putting on the gown. And wash your hands for a change, Sam. Just wash your hands and, and help us serve some food. <laughs> you, you know, you're, now you know you're a Marine. You know you wash your hands. Listen, <laughs> oh, yes, this is just do. one more final word. Let me just give you right now. Yes, sir. Every elected official ought to be talking to Andrea, Carl, and saying, we are supporting of this and we're going to stop these layoffs. Well, you don't got to publicize it. You ain't got to get on TV about it. You just got to do it. And then we, let's move on to what you're saying. Support your bill. Support support ways of raising revenue. Looking at waste because you're gonna have a problem in the state too. You're not exempt. Yes. You're not gonna be exempt. But right now, so we that's what we need you to do. From my set, that's be more helpful to us. The saying, hey, a press release. This 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 what you're doing today. This Zoom, the Zoom they did the other day about schools. This is what we need you guys to do, and that's helpful to us. Okay, and no, I know you don't want me to direct you nine to five because. I can't direct myself 95. So <laughs> but I want you to know that we were the first, we were the union. The city had a, a, a policy when this first started that city employees could not wear masks. I was that getting was ready to talk about that, Anthony. I okay, don't worry. I'm gonna be quiet. Let you talk about it. Let me say something to you. This union, 371, particularly, pushed 
to change that policy. And we told our members, if you feel safe wearing that mask, wear your mask and we're going to support you. And you know what? Not one worker got written up and that policy was changed. I'm going to be quiet. Girl, you go ahead further. But that was a policy in the city of New York back um, in March when I didn't wear a mask. And you know what? Let me have to tell me about whether it's fake or real. It's, it's, it's real. Okay. <laughs> I know you know firsthand it's real, Anthony. Um, you know, that's what I was going to say. You know, we can work together with certain things with COVID because this was new to everybody. Yeah. I mean, it was um, mind boggling some of the things the agencies were doing or didn't have a clue about. And and no disrespect, and I'm going to just call them out to the commissioner of HRA and DHS, who was, was so in tune to say that he our members couldn't wear gloves or masks and they work it in HASA. They work it in the food stamp sites where the clients are coming in with no masks and no gloves, coughing and spitting on them. And, you know, people are going out sick, you know, so uh, that's why we had to put pressure on our legislators to say, listen, somebody talk to somebody because we are not going to have our people out here dying. Um, the, the girl that died, as I explained, the steward that died, she was giving out the PPEs to the doctors and nurses, but she couldn't wear them. Wow. She had to change all of that. And and that's that's the, I believe to this day, that's the reason she passed away, because she was not wearing PPEs in the hospital, at East Elmhurst Hospital, where that was the epicenter of the pandemic. And three people in her unit passed away. So as we go forward and they say there's going to be a second wave, yes, we still yes. going to need to talk um, if, as things come up. And, and as of right now, my members are afraid, those who have been teleworking, afraid to come back to work. We got to make sure these buildings are clean. We got to make sure that there is a policy in place. DCAS has put out something, Department of Citywide Administrative Services, to say what the protocol is, but half of these agencies are not following that. Um, and I know we've been working with DC 37 to do walkthroughs to make sure everything is is put together properly when the members go back um, and it's going to be a new norm I don't think I don't know if we'll ever go back to as, as, except for essential places like H&H &H and uh, Anthony with your child care workers that uh, your social workers where we're going to go back to a five day a week workplace so we need to work together to establish what those rules are going to be especially as we go into collective bargaining again Thank you. So, and also, to piggyback, and I'm glad you said that because these members need to be encouraged again. They, get, they got a lot of them got discouraged, especially when you're working, doing a job, and nothing's coming from it. And you feel like you're doing extra work. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're doing extra activities. Mm -hmm. And once you ever feel like you're doing extra activities, you want extra compensation. You're going to feel that. You're going to want that. And if you don't feel you're getting that, you're going to want to quit. You're going to want to lose the job. You're not going to want to work. You're going to want to work because you don't feel nothing coming to you. So to bring it back on what Anthony Wells and, and Gloria Milton were saying is that we need to make sure that our custom, our, our members feel rejuvenated mm -hmm. back to where as they felt before, comfortable with the unions, comfortable with their job, comfortable with the atmosphere, comfortable in the society as, as a whole to being safe. So we as unions, we, we understand that and we become more than unity people. We become their family. We become their go-to people. We become their everything. You know, they come to us, they, they, not even unionism at all. You know what I'm saying? But they reach to us for it. They want that comfort. They want that no. They want that they know that we're here for them. So I want to continue to make sure we have that for them and make sure that the elected officials work with us so we can have the sources and the tools to make sure unions go forward for our members to keep it going. That's what we do. Work together as a team. Anthony, we have become all become social workers now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we really have to our members. We have. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. You absolutely are. And that's a good thing. Yeah. I don't know if you can unionize unions, uh, Brother Anthony, but that I don't know what I don't James, know. Stay over there. Stay over there, Stay over there. 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 I'm gonna tell Henry on you. I'm going to tell Amy that, that Anthony's up here organizing other unions. <laughs> I'm sure that it's going to be help. Save, save your boss, Matoya. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, there, there's also a new wave of advocacy taking place throughout Southeast Queens. 
um, with everything that's been happening. I think that, uh, you know, the organized labor movement can definitely tap into to uh, increase that advocacy effort. So I'm excited to see that. Uh, we have Devon Lomax um, on the line. He said, he asked, you should look at non-union contractors with wage theft and paying workers off the books, billions of dollars. Any thoughts on that? Oh, good old Devon is on the line. You got Devon, Devon. What's up, Devon? Well, why don't we let him speak? To, if, if he's on the line, let the man speak. He don't. We don't. He don't have to speak through nobody. We know you, man. Don't be. Don't be scared. Come on, Devon. He's in the comments, Senator. He's on Facebook. Well, is that? Uh, well, is he? Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't want to. I don't want to. I thought. I thought the brother wasn't scared, but that's all right. That's all right. Uh, no, Devon is scared. Got, nothing. He, he brother, brother, you know I'm gonna pay for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gonna pay you right. I'm you're talking right. that I can talk all of that here. You know, as soon as I walk out that door, he's gonna be right there talking about now who's scared. <laughs> and I'm gonna say straight out, me, Devon. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> and he's done that too. I'm just I talking think, to think everybody about else. <laughs> so <laughs> The, the brothers no, spoke about points. waste. Yeah, he makes a valid point. The yeah. brothers well, he, he makes about a valid point. And, and, and James is spearheaded some of that. Um, for too long, people have tried to divide the public and the private sector labor movement. And they really want movement. Okay. So Javon is absolutely correct. We need to look at uh, uh, contracts the city has that are hurting city workers. And we need to look at people stealing people's wages. Okay, and, and we need to look at making the private sector, and it, there's unions that are doing that, more diversified. Okay, there are several private sector unions that have um, apprenticeship programs because, because a lot of our young people have been cheated because they have not been offered an opportunity to use their skills. Everybody's skill is not in a book. You know, uh, uh, there are people who have great things with their hands and, and, and they could be all kinds of technicians and do woodwork and construction and be able to feed their families. And we need to push in that area also. So Devon makes a, a, a great point. One, that we got to watch people waste stuff and, and, and commend Patricia James and you, James, and your colleagues for making laws to make it more difficult for people to steal people's wages and to prove the diversity in the private sector and work together, public and private sector together. And, and, and make a pathway for our kids. And that's both in civil service and in the private sector. Now, I, I know that Devon, and I'm gonna say this for two reasons. The first is because I know that, that he is actually doing a lot of work on this issue uh, and I need his vote. The second is because I'm scared to death of the man and, and, and I just stepped on his foot and I'm scared to go out in this building. Latoya, you're going to have to escort me to my car because I don't want that brother walking up on me. So, uh, and I'm joking. For those who don't understand, I'm joking. This is one of the most rational, beautiful people that you're going to meet in a long time. Uh, if he hit me, he would hit me with knowledge. Uh, and that's the way that that man gets down. And that's what I'm scared of. But Devon is, is part of a movement that is looking at how do we diversify the private uh, unions. And I'll be kind and I'll stop there because uh, I'm not sure how much he wants out. But, but, um, but we do need to look at the theft of everybody and, and make sure that he also has Southeast Queens links, um, and and so does Greg Floyd's, so does Kyle Bragg, so does our commissioner. The, the, I'm not the commissioner, the brother in corrections, the president of corrections. Somebody help me out. President, the new guy, the new guy. Uh, he, well, the Cobra. Yes, I believe so. I no, no, no. Benny, the, Benny, 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 Benny. Yes. Benny. Well, we got several more folk who got Southeast Queens links. And I just wanted to put that out. But Devon, why don't you um, get to my people? Uh, Ivan Young is my counsel. And if we need laws to strengthen uh, folks stealing wages, now you know we need to crack down on that and get to my counsel. I'll be glad to carry that type of stuff uh, to make sure that we, that we do see there's one union. 
then some of it is public and some of it is private. But at the end of the day, there's got to be one union. Um, Latoya, what, you, what else you got? And keep me out of trouble, Latoya. Got it, Senator. Uh, with five minutes left to the call, there are no more questions. Uh, okay. So closing comments and announcements. Then, then I think it's time for a closing statement. Um, and and I want to hear, but Gary Hilliard is also on here somewhere uh, now. Although he 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 Gary has uh, Gary, are you here? If you're here, you need to try to unmute yourself. I want you to, um, uh, or if we can unmute Gary. Gary was one of the main people of 1199 who was catching hell at the hospital. Uh, uh, down in the Rockaways, you saw um, he. There was a. They did a segment of what was happening there, and Brother Hilliard and and those workers uh, were in a horrendous situation. Uh, I'm not sure if we could get to him, but it would be, would have been nice. Well, I'm, still, Senator, I'm here. Brother Hilliard, on behalf of everybody. Uh, we want to say that you had our love, uh, y'all who were in the hospital dealing front and center. We, you had our love and our support is there. How is the situation? You got around two minutes, sir. How is the situation in the hospitals now? How is everything going? Well, right, right now, good afternoon, everyone. Right now, everything is pretty good. Um, the numbers are down. Um, we have PPE, um, everybody's following all the precautions. I don't know is it if that they're not coming to the hospital because of fear, but we just, we're not seeing a lot of reported cases right now. And we're just kind of preparing for what's to come. Like the information we've been given is September, October, there should be a spike. And if it's going to be a spike in it, is it going to be to like before where we're gonna have those type of deaths or is it just people gonna be carrying the virus? At this point, we really don't know, you know? So it's just kind of a, a put, stay prepared, but to look back for a moment, I've never seen nothing like this in my life. I would come in here in the morning and it would be 16, 17 deaths overnight. And as I'm taking them out, putting them in trailers, there would be another four or five coming. You know, they said in around late May it would stop, and it did. And like right now, it's not that it's not that kind of death going on. And thank God for that. But I I think we're just in a in a moment of just staying prepared, making sure everybody take um, healthy precautions. I think everybody need to eat better, take proper vitamins, build up your immune system, because we really still don't know. You know, this thing keeps changing. It, they tell you something one day, you know, the Center for Disease Control, and then a, a month later, they tell you it's coming a different way. We know like this month is the flu season. So we got that coming. So when the when people catch the flu, is it the flu or is it or is it the COVID virus uh, being masked by the flu? You know, you st we still have so many questions that's not answered. Gary, we got around 10 more seconds for you before I give these people is there any last word that you want to say on, on this subject? Uh, just, just in terms to what all you guys been saying, we, we just need a concrete plan um, that all the unions can, can grab a hold and collectively work together. I mean, that's what we do as unions, man. We, we outlay goals and plans, and, and then we fight to achieve it for the betterment of our members. So, you know, uh, Senator, you're a big fan of our unions. We always go to you. You always come to us. So I just think there need to be a concrete plan put in place that every union's gonna play a role in it. Thank you. Well, thank you for that, sir. And, and again, on behalf of all of these people that you see and the people that you don't see, y'all had our hearts and, and we, we, you, you, had, we, you had our prayers, our hearts. We are glad you and the union movement made it through that. Uh, we stand with you. Now we're going to end uh, by allowing everybody to have their last minute uh, of conversation here. I'm trying to figure who, who haven't I picked on, who's, who's still speaking to me, 
Uh, <laughs> since I, I have ruined myself totally, John, I guess I haven't fully got, got you uh, yet. Uh, <laughs> but, but after this one, you'll avoid me like to play, but that's all right. John, <laughs> how about your last words here? Um, no, I, this, is, this has been a great dialogue and I appreciate you bringing us together because our elected officials are our allies and we need you as much as you need us. Um, and local 1321 Queens Library Guild is definitely wants to work with anyone who can help our community because what, if our community is helped, then we, the library is helped and our workers are helped. Um, and I'll read it what I said earlier, unions are as strong as ever and it's great to have one in the workforce. So. Absolutely. Gloria, I'm gonna let you speak last because I'm gonna let you have the last word. Uh, let's see, Sean, let's see, who have I picked on less? Sean, I haven't picked on you enough today, so I I'll go with you. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for having us, Brother Sanders. Uh, this is always a pleasure to have this type of uh, forum and to bring people together with a common goal in mind, which is to achieve betterness in society of, as a whole, to bring, back, to bring back the things that we grew up on, things that I think has been lost, some things that have been lost that we need to reattain again. The technology in the world is good, but technology took out a lot of things that made us lazy, made our people lazy, made people that go through the outreach. There's an outreach that we got to get to. We cannot sit at home and do everything on our computers, on our phones. We got to get our butts off our, excuse my French, and get out there and make a difference as well. You know what I'm saying? So this is where we got to be at. We as unions, we come together. Like, like John said, with, with officials, we're your allies, you're our allies. We got to keep together to keep things going as one unit, because we're all here for a reason. We ought to make a, a goal to make things better in this whole society as a whole. That's what we're here for. So, so I, I encourage you. I encourage all the officials and the ones I don't encourage and we don't need them in, in office, as you know, we won't put them there. Okay, as you know, my endorsements are very real. Okay, so and I'm very, I'm, I'm very tender on my endorsements. So, um, but um, I just want to say thank you so much, Brother Sanders. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. And uh, we hope that this is going to be something that's going to be continuous so that it never stops because this is not a, it's never, Problems, problems are continuous, constantly. So, 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 so problems are continuous, answers are gonna be continuous, and the resolving gotta be continuous as well. So we're gonna be going forward for that. Thank you, brother, appreciate you. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you, much love. Uh, now, I don't picked on this man enough that I'm, I'm, I'm scared of him too, but, uh, but I, I gotta call his name, although I'm too scared to call his name. Uh, President Wells, I, I, maybe if I, if I get proper. President Wells, do you have anything further to say, sir? First of all, simplify. So everybody knows <laughs> he's a Marine. He ain't afraid of nothing, OK? I want to thank you, Latoya, your staff, Ivan, for putting this together. I think it was a formative two, two hours. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I am singly focused on, one, stopping layoffs, two, making sure our people are safe when they go back, make sure they have clean, healthy stuff, and, and preparing uh, and by the way, uh, making sure that the, the person that occupies 1600 uh, doesn't do so after January 19th, okay? Those are my single goals. Thank you, brother. Thank you, and thank the members and people who listen. We're uh, union proud and union strong. God bless you all, and God bless the union. Thank you, brother. Well done. Well done. Well, well. Ms. Glory, President Gloria, we've, I've, uh, you know, I, I got to get back to your good side. I don't stole authors of uh, main bill, put my, slap my name on it, tell everybody it's my idea. And you up here pointing out in front of God and country that there ain't no such of a lie. You know, took it from poor author. Well, you ain't mad enough to say where you got it from. Well, you forced me into doing it, so I'm, I'm glad I had that moment. Yeah. But Better listen, I, I'm glad you listened because it has been falling on deaf ears for years. Um, I just want to say thank you again, Senator San Sanders. You have always been a friend to Local 1180, even before my presidency with Arthur's presidency. Um, and we have always looked to you as a friend. As you know, a, a, a great majority of our members live in your uh, area, your territory. And um, that's why we thought our Queens Committee was so important so that they could be able to talk to you and talk to other politicians um, about their concerns in their community. I reiterate everything my brothers have said. Um, 
we we have done a few of these together and um, it's insightful and it's also good for the members to hear how hard we are working for their benefit. Um, we, I can't say it hard enough, um, the, the movement, Black Lives Matter movement and the pandemic happened nearly at the same time. It's a perfect storm for people to understand how much we need to change who lives in that uh, White House right now. I call it the White House right now, but it's the president's house. I don't even like calling it the White House anymore. Um, so I say to everybody out there, complete your census, your census, your census, your census. We only have a few more days to do that and get out and vote. We have early voting, we have mail voting, and we have, you can do it on November 3rd. So just make sure that you get out there and vote. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. I also want to thank CSA who was on with us earlier. And uh, I really want to appreciate them. Uh, they are part of, of what makes us whole. So I want to thank the audience for, for, for uh, really uh, listening to your leaders. I mean, really, you got a chance to hear them off, uh, you know, almost off the record, man. We, we're all home when we speak of Southeast Queens. So you got a chance to hear a home conversation. I especially was grateful to see Anthony uh, and all of us were because, you know, we have been really concerned about our brother uh, and to see him is such a, uh, I don't know about you, Anthony, but it is such a, a thrill to our spirits, man. Um, uh, you know, to see for ourselves, I spoke to you, heard your voice, that's good. But to see you now, I don't know if you faking, and as soon as you turn away, whatever. But if you fake it, keep faking. <laughs> if you fake it long enough, people will believe it. Folk believe I'm a senator, so what the heck? So you know, keep keep going, brother. Keep going. So you know, keep keep on going. Um, my friends, for anybody who doesn't understand, I respect these leaders so doggone high. I mean, I, I, I think it's a little short of and them walking on water. So when you hear any humor from me, well, oh, 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 Anthony was saying he walks on water. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> oh, water don't walk on air. I, whatever it is, I, I'm sorry. I'm a little slow. So, but I, what you're hearing is love. So if anybody heard anything different, they're not understanding that I respect and love these folks to the, to the degree that I'm going to be as human and as real as possible. I'm going to get rid of all kinds of, of, of false titles and false this so that we can speak and, and talk about how do we build the family. And that is the audience. That is the members. That is the people of this district. How do we, we, we think you're family, my friends. We don't think that your constituents or whatever else, or people who work or whatever, you are family and how do we build it? So that's what you heard uh, with the respect that we're we're doing. It's not, it's not fear. Anthony is right, I'm a Marine. It's not fear that drives me. It's the deep love that I have for these people that, that I know I can call them at midnight uh, except for Sean, and they will get up. <laughs> Sean would tell me about myself for calling him at midnight. I could call him too, my friends, I'm joking. And they will take that call and they will know that if it's about their members and they will take that call. Uh, I will also say the census is gonna be really, really critical this day and age. Um, you got a government doing everything possible to make sure that we don't do census right, that we don't vote. And voting, it's hard to say which of these two. I, I would argue that the vote is the mo most important, followed real quick by the census um, of what we have to do. But having said all of those things, my friends, there is a day that we have created in this country where we honor working people. And that day is Labor Day. Uh, it should be May Day, but there's a whole story behind that. One story at a time, one story at a time. Arthur Chelyotis is the one who reminded me of that. But 
May Day was sent a Labor Day. So we have Labor Day. And for everybody, I really wanted you to take a moment and think of how far we have come thanks to labor. Thanks to laboring people. Uh, that eight hour day did not come because rich people decided, you know, today we need to start treating folk better. Uh, no, child labor would still be going on if folk didn't get up there and say enough of this madness. We're going to have children in school. We're going to have a time for people to get to know their family, et cetera. That came from labor. So somewhere in your journey, if you take a moment, just think about it and think of how you could aid the house of labor. How do we make sure that, that everybody is in a union of one type or another? Uh, or something like a union, uh, in, including maybe senators. So having said that, I will stop right there before I get myself in further trouble and say, God bless you all. Thank you for coming here. Uh, yeah. Thanks to this, my staff that really did and put us all together. It's a joy to, to work with you for the people of New York and America and the world. God bless you all. Take Senator, care. before you close, Senator, we wanna do announcements. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Go ahead and do the announcement since I'm messing up shop. Thank you. Um, awesome. So uh, first, we want to uh, just announce that uh, the center is hosting. Uh, allow me to do this one. I'll, my friends, we need to know about what's going on in Kenosha. There's something different about this place that had brought two presidential candidates there, too. I would encourage all of us, we are going to hear from my counterpart, the state representative in Kenosha, who will speak, but we'll also hear from the head of the NAACP in Kenosha. We're trying to get some Black Lives Matter people so that we can hear directly. That way, you don't have to turn to Fox News to get your understanding of what is happening. You can hear directly from that, and that's going to happen on the 9th of September. I encourage you all to share it with everyone so that we can hear directly from the people. Latoya, what else is happening? You're muted. Next up, we have uh, our community economic development uh, training taking place on September 14th within the beauty industry. Uh, Senator Sanders has um, signed up partnered with the state licensing division. The beauty care industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. So as we continue to talk about the proposed layoffs within the city and the budget cuts, it's now an opportunity where uh, we can position our uh, community to take advantage of this, um, the beauty industry. So we have Amy from the, she's a director of the Division of Licensing Services. She's gonna come on with Senator Sanders to talk about what our constituents can do to take the necessary steps to get their uh, licensing and nail technicians, uh, cosmetology, estheticians, you name it, the whole work. So really excited about that. Please share this information with your members um, and we look forward to seeing you all there. And uh, the last one we have is Senator Sanders in about uh, 45 minutes, he's gonna do another State of the Union on the state of NYCHA, uh, which a lot of our um, union members are also NYCHA residents. So hopefully some of you guys could uh, participate in that discussion as well at two o'clock here on Facebook Live. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, great job, Latoya. Appreciate you guys, John, Anthony.